Welcome to Bald Guy DIY. In this video, I'm gonna show you a simple and straightforward method in order to connect and use a seven segment display with a microcontroller. I wanted to make another video comparing the use of the Arduino IDE and MicroPython on an ESP32 microcontroller. Unfortunately, in this project, I had a lot of trouble getting the MicroPython code to work properly. So I stuck with the Arduino. It's a very simple process. What I want to share with you today is how to take a four digit seven segment display and control it using the Arduino IDE software. So without further ado, let's get started. For this project, I'm using the ESP32 by Expressive. And if you need to see how I set that up in the past, you can watch the video link here. I'm using a seven segment LED display from Adafruit. And as you can see here, it also comes with a backpack, which is a controller that allows the device to be controlled by only four wires, a power, ground, and data and clock command. Beautiful thing about this backpack is it also comes with everything laid out perfectly, even a drawing so that you can orient the LED display properly. Start out by lining up the display with the markings on the circuit board so that everything fits together and feeding the pins through the holes. Next, I'm simply gonna solder the connections. One of the tricks for a good solder is making sure that you have enough heat and using a flux core solder, which allows it to bond properly to the terminals, but not stick together very much. If you get the heat just right, and if you feed the solder well, you won't get any globbing or joining of multiple terminals together. And on these kinds of devices that have a lot of different pins, that can be the difference between a lot of frustration and a fairly simple process. There's the finished LED in place, and now I'm just gonna trim off two of the header pins because it came with six, and I only need four to connect the lines for this. And I'm gonna use some side cutters here to remove the pins that are sticking up before I put the headers on there. Usually I use a nice pair of flush cutting side cutters, but I couldn't find them, so I had to just use another pair of side cutters instead. Not quite as clean of a cut, but it'll do the trick. Next, I'm going to put the header pins in place. Now you could mount these either up or down. I'm going to put them down because if I put them in a project box down the road, I'm going to want to have um, them facing away from the front of the display. And then the same kind of thing with the solder. You want to make sure that the iron is hot enough and that you're going to get a good connection to the board with all those pins, but not have any of them joining. As you can see here, I did actually get a little extra solder, but a combination of wiping the tip and applying more heat, and I got a nice clean finish with none of the traces touching each other, which would of course short the pins and cause it not to work properly. And there's the finished soldered piece. The connection for this is quite simple. There's only four wires, one for the positive 3.3 or 5 volts, one for the negative to the ground, one for the clock, and one for the data lines. On the ESP32, I'm gonna use pin 22 for the clock and pin 21 for the data. Now it's time to get to the code and open up the Arduino IDE and then go to manage libraries because this is going to require an extra library. This is the Adafruit backpack library. So I'm just gonna type in LED backpack and the Adafruit library will be ready to download. Once that's installed, if you do wanna take a look at the data sheet for it and some of the example code, you can certainly do that by clicking the more info button. And then as you can see here, there's readme files, a lot of the information about how the library is made and what the intention was. And then if you go to the examples folder, you can actually see examples of this. Now these backpacks are used for quite a few different things, including some LED matrices. So you wanna make sure that you get a code for the LED backpack and that's called the seven segment example here. Now all I'm gonna do is select all of that example code and copy it and paste it into a brand new Arduino project file. As you can see here, I've done that. And all you need to do simply now is upload that sketch. If you have everything wired correctly, it will actually start to run things on the display already. When I first did the upload, it did give me an error because the GFX library is not installed. So I'm gonna just search for the managed libraries, Adafruit GFX, and install those as well. Now, as I'll show you later, if you clean up the code, you won't actually need the GFX library for most of the seven segment stuff, but it was required in the sample code, so I installed it. 
After uploading it, you can see here, it does run through all of the test cycles that were in the example code, ending with a counter that counts up to 10,000. I decided to remove as much of the code as I could in order to streamline it and show you what was really required in order to be able to get anything to display. For most things, like I said, you can comment out the GFX library and the wire library as well because the functions built into the backpack library do cover the I squared C connection. And as you can see here, in its most basic sense, you only need to include the backpack library, the initialize command, a setup loop, and you can already start printing the counter loop. Here I'm using the counter. I've adjusted the timing to half a second or 500 milliseconds. And you can see just by stripping it down, you can get just the counter, just what you would need for this particular application. The difference between the most basic code and most advanced is really just what kind of features you need. But I want to show you that you really don't need very many lines of code in order to get the LED display working in at least some measure. To show you something a little bit more complicated, I went to the code from my last project of a temperature and humidity sensor and simply replaced the LCD code with the LED seven segment code so that you could see that it's very easy to drag and drop these things in and be able to display the temperature on the seven segment display instead. Upload the code, here it is already displaying the temperature of the sensor. So there you have a simple and straightforward process. Arduino really has done a great job of incorporating the different libraries and, and making it very simple to do these add-ons and expand the capability of Arduino to control so many other types of devices. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and that if you're using seven segment displays in the future, you'll find it all the easier. If you've got an idea for other things you'd like to see explained, how they connect with a microcontroller or any other type of project, let me know in the comments. And if you do like the videos we're making, please consider subscribing and check back weekly as I post a new video every Saturday morning. Until next time, no matter how you use your digits in projects, don't be afraid to be balder.